Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're creating a gunshot effect in Blender. First, add a mesh cylinder and the cylinder properties sidebar. Set the word size to 14 and change the cap fill to nothing. Since we don't need the caps yet. Before we start editing, go to the render properties, enable bloom and scroll down to the color management. Change the view transforms from AGX or Filmic to standard. Next, select the cylinder and press tab to enter edit mode. Select the bottom edges, one vertical edge and the top edges. Press U to open unwrap menu and click mark seams. Then press A to select all, press U again and click unwrap. Now rotate the cylinder 90 degrees on the X axis and scale it up on the Y axis. Now press F and hold Ctrl Shift and Y to block the Y axis and scale it down on X and Z coordinates. In the edit mode, select one end of the cylinder and scale it down. Next, click the options icon and mark this effect to lay origins and move the origin point to the start of the cylinder. Switch to shading tab, add a new material and delete the principal BSDF. Enable node wrangler add-on by going to edit preferences add-ons and typing node. Turn it on and save your preferences. Add a gradient texture With the gradient texture selected, press Ctrl T to add mapping and texture coordinates Plug the UV into the mapping node and you'll see the gradient starts from one end of the mesh Now add a color ramp and create extra slots to form black and white patches on the mesh As you can see, I'm adding more slots and let's make this in the middle ones a complete black and you can see in the mesh, I'm gonna need to add more slots so you can expand this color ramp. Let's first move these black color slots to one side so we can add more. These black and white patterns will serve as a mask for emission and transparent shader. So add an emission shader, a transparent shader, choose a color for emission, connect both the shaders to a mix shader. Emission to the first input and the transparent to the second input. Now plug the color ramp into the mix shader's factor input. You'll notice that the black patches become emission color and the white areas turn transparent. Finally, increase the emission strength to make the effect more pronounced. You'll notice a sharp boundary between the emission and transparent parts. Plug the black and white mask from the color ramp into the strength input of the emission shader. The emission appears black, so add an inward node to flip the colors and then insert a math node. Set the math operation to multiply and increase the value depending on the desired intensity. To create more projectiles, you can add additional black sections in the color ramp to increase the number of emission areas. Next, duplicate this mesh and switch to edit mode. Select this end of the mesh and grab it back on the Y axis. Scale it up and also the other end scale it into something like this. 
a seam appears here so in object mode rotate this mesh to hide this seam and click here to duplicate the material and rename it in color ramp we currently have about 10 slots remove the extra slots by using this minus icon and we need about 4 of these slots Now adjust the color ramp values. Uh, next we need a noise texture. And duplicate this mapping node. And add another color ramp. The mapping node will use the same UV input. Now switch to UV editing tab. With the mesh selected, enter edit mode and press A to select all. In the UV window, rotate the mesh by 90 degrees. Now grab this end and move it on the X axis up to the middle of this UV map and scale it down. Also for the other end, scale it up and move it on the x-axis even outside the UV plane. For now just follow along, I'll explain the reasoning behind this later. Next in the material settings, remove the invert node. This is not needed because we have inverted the UVs. Now in the noise texture, increase the scale to 9 and set the distortion to 1. I'll make a few adjustments to the color ramp as well. Now add a mix color node and plug this gradient color ramp into the A input of the mix color node and this noise texture color ramp into the B input. Change the blending mode from mix to exclusion. Next add another color ramp after this mix color node. Connect the output of this color ramp to the factor input of the mix shader and preview the results. And also adjust the color ramp to tweak the values. Now go back to this value node and tweak the values until this effect appears in the middle. You can also connect this value node's output to this location or rotation input of the second mapping node. In the emission shader, you can change the color or even plug a texture with a color ramp. For example, in this, I've used a gradient texture. Next, duplicate this mesh and rotate it 180 degrees on the X coordinates. and scale it and also move it back Duplicate this mesh one more time and this time uh, grab this corner and move it forward and also scale it up. Next duplicate this material again for this new mesh. This time delete the noise texture, the color ramp and the mapping node. Instead uh, add a border noise texture and a, another color ramp. Increase the scale value of the Voronoi texture to around 20. Instead of using Euclidean, I'm gonna switch to Manhattan. But feel free to experiment with other options and color ramps as well. Finally, plug the output of this color ramp into the exclusion mode. Uh, as you can see the results now, this effect is actually covering a very large area and to reduce this effect's coverage, 
let's first preview the color ramp from this region node. And you'll notice that the black area represents where the effect is visible. To reduce the effect's coverage, bring the black values closer together on the color ramp. You can adjust these values and experiment with different textures to achieve your desired results. And the method of animating all these materials is the same, so let's go through the easiest example. As you know, the material is controlled by black and white mass, but the black areas represent the emission and the white areas are transparent. In the value node, adjusting the value moves the mask along the UVs, so we'll keyframe this value node to animate this effect. First, go to the starting frame in the timeline and set the value node to 0. Press I while hovering over the value node to insert a keyframe. Now after 10 frames, change the value to 1 and press I again to insert another keyframe. After another 10 frames, set the value node to 2 and press I to add the final key. This will create one fire or gunshot effect. To add multiple gunshots, simply duplicate these three keyframes and place them one frame after the previous set. I repeat these keyframes for as many shots as needed. Now let's see the UV editing. Here's how the texture looks on a full normal UV map. And if we scale down the UV map, you'll notice that the texture appears smaller and closer together. Conversely, if we scale it up, the texture becomes compressed and appears larger, and more texture fits into the UV space. Now if we scale up just one end of the UV map, the texture on that part of the mesh becomes larger. Scaling down the other end makes the texture appear smaller and tighter. Now let's reposition the UVs and move both of its ends on the x-axis. What this does is that it changes the flow of animation. If we leave the UV map in its original position, the animation moves in a, some kind of linear fashion. However, by adjusting the UV map like this, you'll notice that the animation starts faster and it gradually slows down towards the other end. Uh, just like in explosion or gunshot effect, the particles are created quickly but they stay a little longer in the air before fading. So that's all for today's video. I hope you like it and I'll see you next time.